The FBI recently recommended that Americans reboot their routers in order to combat a type of malware that's possibly linked to the Russian government. This attack highlights how easy it is to hack a router, and today we'll explore a piece of software called Routersploit, which shows you just how easy it is to get started hacking routers, even if you're a beginner. We'll show this and more on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. The VPN filter malware specifically targets routers, but it doesn't use sophisticated zero-day vulnerabilities to do so. Instead, it uses common default credentials and old vulnerabilities which were patched in 2017, meaning if you've been updating your credentials and you haven't been using the default ones, and you've actually updated your firmware, you're probably fine. Now, for most people, this is not the case, because most people don't know that it's possible to do this, and even if they do, they don't have time to. But with the emergence of the VPN filter malware, it's important for you to be able to check and make sure that anything on your, your network, including your router, isn't harboring these sorts of vulnerabilities which can be exploited for nefarious means. Now, you don't need a piece of mal Russian malware to do this. You can just download something like Routersploit, which is a simple Python program, in order to target and then scan devices on your network to see if anything is vulnerable to a known exploit. Now, the reason that's important is these exploits can be written into code, like VPN filter, and automatically spread to any device that has the vulnerability. So if there's something on your network, like a webcam or a security camera that's been discontinued, it won't ever get a firmware update again, meaning it will always have the vulnerabilities it has at this moment. So you can basically see these as an infection sitting on your network waiting for someone to notice, because anybody who can connect to this vulnerability can infect it with pretty much anything they want. So to get started, it doesn't take much. You'll need to download the Python program, which can be run on any computer that runs Python. And from there, you'll just need to be on the same network as the device you want to test. This doesn't take much work, so let's get started. Before we get started, it's important to note that this is definitely illegal if you are using it to break into someone's router that you don't have permission to. While this is an excellent tool for auditing your own Internet of Things devices and routers, it's important to note that you need permission before doing this on any device, so be careful before using it on anything that you're not sure about. Now, to get started, it doesn't take much. You can go ahead and just do a git clone from this uh, GitHub uh, website right here, but the specific installation instructions include a couple requirements, which are future, prereqs, uh, and some of these other ones. Uh, and fortunately, that's all taken care of in a requirements.txt file. So if you're installing this for the first time, depending on which operating system you're running, you can find specific installation instructions here. And in our case, we are installing it on uh, Mac OS. So we'll just do a simple git clone and then the address, cd into the routersploit folder, which we will create, and then sudo python3, which actually doesn't always work, but you can try just python. Uh, tack m pip install tack r requirements.txt and then python3 although again if that doesn't work you can just try python uh, rsf.py so that's as easy as it is to get this set up on mac os and since i've already done so let me give you a little bit of an understanding of how simple it is to jump into routersploit so we will just go ahead and type cd routersploit and then sudo python period slash rsf dot pi. And just like that, we are into Routersploit. So the module we'll, we will be using is Autopon. So we can type use scanner slash Autopon. And this should put us into the Autopon module. Now you might notice this is somewhat like Metasploit and it works kind of the same way. There are different modules you can go into to accomplish specific tasks. And in this case, we're using a scanner module in order to find vulnerabilities. Now, if you haven't done a lot of network scanning before, you might be confused as to how you're going to target a device. But in general, you can assume that if you're a beginner, one of the most common IP addresses that will be hard coded into a router of to be its address is 192.168.0.1. Now you can go ahead and try that, and in this case there should be a router there, so we can type uh, show options, 
and see the targeting options we have within Routersploit. And in this case, we can see that it is waiting for a target IP address and it is currently set to a default port of 80. So we can go ahead and type in the default uh, address we know by typing set target 192.168.1.1. Now we can type run, and it will run all these known exploits against the target and see if it is vulnerable to any of them. And if it is, then we will get a green mark next to one of them on the left side here. Now, if there are not any vulnerabilities, that means that at least according to what Routersploit knows, it's not vulnerable to any of this, these very long list of exploits. But keep in mind that there can be devices on your network that are not a router that are also vulnerable and represent a risk. Now, we can look for these and we can also take Rattlesploit to the next level by using something like an Nmap or a Thing scan to search the entire network range for devices and then zero in on some that might have ports open that aren't the standard one, port 80, that Rattlesploit is looking for. So in this Nmap scan, I've said that I want to search the entire network range for port 80, port 8080, port 8081, and then port 81. These are common alternative ports that Internet of Things devices will use in order to access the internet. Uh, so they will typically host a web server and you'll be able to attempt to go to that and log in. So here, after the scan, we can see that it produced a result of this one IP address that has port 81 open. And if I navigate to it quickly by copying and pasting it, I can see that it prompts me for a username and password. Hmm, interesting. So if I press cancel, it doesn't give me the brand name or anything, but I can see that something's there. So let's go ahead and feed this into Routersploit, but we'll need to change a couple things in order to make it work. So we'll go ahead and change the target by typing set target, but then we'll need to change the port number. So we'll type set port 81. Now, we're targeting a device that we've discovered with a different sort of scan, and you can refer to our various tutorials on how to scan with uh, Nmap or with uh, Thing, because both will allow you to find new devices on the network. In fact, a Thing ap application on your phone is an easy way that you can target these sorts of uh, devices and then just pass in the ports and the IP addresses that you find to uh, Routersploit. So let's go ahead and run this against the device that we've discovered with the port 81 open. And we can see here that we actually have found a vulnerability, uh, a credential disclosure vulnerability that hopefully will give us the credentials without us needing to be authenticated. Now we can go ahead and take advantage of this exploit that we found by copying it and typing use and then pasting it. In this case, exploits, cameras, uh, some sort of credential disclosure. And then we can go up, uh, press the up button to see the commands that we've entered before and reset our target to the IP address we want, reset our port to port, to port 81, and then to check to make sure that this device is actually vulnerable, we can type check. Here we can see the target is confirmed as vulnerable, so the final step in exporting it is to type run. Here we go. Just like that, horrifying information has been disclosed. So much in fact that we need to blur it in order to protect our privacy. But in general, you can expect that an exploit of a router will either allow you to do something you're not supposed to do, disclose credentials you're not supposed to see, or show other configuration settings that can allow you to either learn enough information to take the next step in escalation, or otherwise attack a router with relatively little effort. Now, some of these exploits go so far as to just tell you the password, where others might require more technical skill to fully use. But regardless, this can reveal exploits that someone with more skill than you can certainly take advantage of in an automated fashion. Now, if you find a device that is uh, vulnerable like this, you should immediately attempt to upgrade it uh, with a firmware update. However, if none exist, you should take it offline until you can correct the problem because it represents a threat to your network. If you own a router or Internet of Things device, it's your responsibility to make sure that the default credentials have been changed and any firmware updates have been applied to mitigate against threats like VPN filter. If you don't do so, you run the risk of having your device automatically exploited. And you should consider that while you do own these devices, the person who ultimately owns them is the one who can control them. 
So to prevent this, you can use something like Thing to scan your network and make sure that all devices have been accounted for. And if you find a new device, you can scan it and look for any ports that could be open and vulnerable. So you can direct a tool like Routersploit who may not be able to find those ports with its default settings. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.